grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living in His
Aleluya. 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 Oh, bless the Lord. Aleluya. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. Aleluya. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, ready or not. Jesus is coming. We are going to see Hallelujah. the king. Hallelujah. Ready or not. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Soon. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king we're not going too fast with this one soon and very soon we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we are going to see the king one more time oh, soon and very soon we are going to see the king oh, soon and very Thank you, Lord. We are going to see the King. We thank you, Lord. Mark has gone ahead of us. Oh, Hallelujah. He's gone ahead of us to see the King. Hallelujah. 
praise his wonderful name and so we are here today to worship and to give thanks for his love hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah bless and in the Lord. question it said whether you ready or not hallelujah jesus is coming again hey hallelujah whether you rich or you poor oh lord he's coming again oh yes ah rather you see everyone saved he's coming again he's coming again ready or not he's coming again ready or not he's coming again he's coming again hey, he's coming again hallelujah Hallelujah. and somebody said you know i've heard that all before mm. i've heard that many times before Jeez. hallelujah but make it today be the last time you hear it ah. ready or not jesus is coming again hallelujah whether you ready or not my jesus is coming whether you're ready or not about Mark. Hallelujah. Praise God. I heard some very good news Hallelujah. about him. Yeah. So today I'm going to ask you to stand and we're going to sing this song. Please. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. We are celebrating his life. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Because he's only mm. sleeping. So I'm going to ask you to join us by standing if you oh, can. Oh Jesus. Thank and we are going to really worship today. Thank you Lord. In Thank the beauty of holiness. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, let's give it Jesus Christ a clap, church. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. A clap. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Mr. Musician. Let's Hallelujah. go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, Whether you're ready or not, oh, yeah. my Jesus is coming. Whether you're ready or not,
It is all right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It is all right. Even in the midst of death, it is all right. It is all right. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It is Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is all right. Even in death, it is all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that Praise it is all right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is all right. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails. All my days have been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails. All my have been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am here, I will sing of the sweet, of the good. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am going to invite everybody to stand at this time. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me will never die. And Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. It is the Lord who gave and the Lord who hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thou shalt guide me with my, thy counsel. And afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I 
in heaven but thee and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee my flesh and my heart faileth but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is his Christ Jesus our Lord let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and I will receive you unto myself that where I am there he may be also brothers and sisters I greet you well in the name of the Lord Jesus it is good to be here but under the circumstances it is very sad however all is well that is done by the Lord as we come today to this solemn occasion we are reminded anew that our funeral services are not geared for the dead but for the living if the preacher has a mission at this it is to try to bring a measure of comfort to those whose heart are heavy today mr emmons never joined a church but we are not to judge the inner secrets of any man's heart we know not what emotions stirred his soul nor what sacred communication he might have had with his god however we do know this we truly know that our god is a great loving god who never make a mistake he always look upon the earth and he does always that which is right and best so with confidence we leave our friend today in the hands of a loving merciful heavenly father knowing that god's way is the best and his thoughts are above our thoughts we will do the aim from the program to canaan's land i'm on my way where the soul never dies my darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies to Kenyan's land, I'm on my way, where, where the, the soul of man never dies. My, my darkest night will turn to day, where, where the soul of man never dies.
die. Do you? Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us remain standing for prayer at this time as Reverend Redwood is going to be praying for us. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you Hallelujah. thanks today for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your mercies. We thank you for holding the weather today that we can have such a sunshine. Lord, we thank you for the life of Mark that you have lent us. And Father God, you have chosen to take him back. I pray for comfort for the family. I pray for comfort for the friends. I pray that you'll strengthen them as they go through this sorrow. Amen. Mighty God, I pray that you'll be a fence around them. Oh, comfort the divine. Only you one can do this. So comfort. Strengthen your people, Lord, I pray. Bless the service now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. I was sharing in this funeral service with me today is overseer Robert Phillips and Reverend Jennifer Redwood. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we'll try to see our best we can get out of here you know this is portland and you know if you come to portland and you didn't get a good shower of rain you are not really welcome so we'll try our best to see how quickly we can get out of here now a podium is provided at the bottom there for those of you who are rendering your items so first of all, we'll have the first lesson. This will be taken from Job chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. This will be read by Abigail Hemmings' daughter. That is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such an one and bringeth me judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an earling his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth boughs like a plant, but man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and raiseth not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. Reading for us today, the first lesson. Man that is born of a woman is of few days 
and full of trouble. And that is saying to us, whatever life throws at us, whatever the situation, help us. We need to just go through with it because we know we shall be victorious because we don't have long hair. So whatever we are doing, let us do it to the glory of Almighty God. Coming to us at this time is the Port Antonio Baptist Church with a selection. Yes, they're coming.
name of Jesus. And I think Mr. Emmons is saying, I am free from the cares of tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. Because he has gone on before. And he is better off than those of us who must remain in this world a little longer. Bless the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for that lovely rendition. The second lesson comes to us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. This will be read by Mrs. Taylor. you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that he sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of Jesus. Now we will be going into the tributes, and they will come in this order. First, we'll have the Tax Administration of Jamaica, Portland, and then followed by Mrs. Verna Goodall, and then Shaquille Emmons' son, and Mr. Colmaine Smith, friend. Praise the name of the Lord. But just before the first tribute, I'm going to ask everybody to stand. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are going to do the chorus. Better days are coming by and by. Everybody is crying out for what is happening in the world. But you know something? We are anticipating a better day someday better days are coming by and by and we reach the city
just a little change in the order of the tributes. Um, uh, the tax administration is asking that Mrs. Goodall go before them. I hope that is okay with her. So you will follow after Mrs. Goodall. of the Lord is the death of his saints. I stand here today in honor to do this tribute for the Emmons family. I have known the Emmons nearly 40 years from their lovely mom and dad through my, mo my mother-in-law, Daphne Armstrong. But I've grown a special love for Mark and his son because I always love their humility. And after coming to the New Testament Assembly again, the love extended to the rest of the family. I mostly met Mark at the Revenue, and I will always remember how gracious he is. He always greeted me with such kindness and understanding. He was always willing to help. Life is like a glass, very fragile. I always encourage Mark to come to church with his family. I would even say, Bob, come sometimes, you know, so you won't be alone. Then he would tell me, you know, I prefer to go to my foundational church. So I kind of give him some rest, but every time he visited, I was always excited for him. At the end of January of this year, or early February, after he came to church and after the end of the sermon, he came to the altar. I took his number, but didn't get to speak to him. While I was abroad, I took a book that I was reading, and I saw his number in the book. And I said to myself, as soon as I come back, I'm going to call Mark. Only to know the same weekend I was here, he was in surgery. When he came out of the hospital, a few days, I think, afterwards, Mish called me one morning and said, Mark asked her to take him to church and ask that I be there. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it the morning. But you know, as Christians, we always sing, lead me, Lord, I will follow. And so that morning when I did not come, my conscience gave me a hard time. So during the course of the day, I called and said, Mish, is Mark still there? Can I come? She said, no, he already left to his mom. So I felt hard on myself, but I am glad I did make it in. On the 23rd of May, which was my birthday, I decided I have to see Mark today. So being a public holiday, it was very hard, couldn't get a drive, and everybody said me that road is so bad, but I insist I must go. When I reach. I, he was sitting in his living room, and Mish was a little concerned of him not eating or taking his medication and so on. But he, on Mark, Mark's face, he didn't show as if he had on any stress or anything, but he, he only like make some like expression on his face when he is trying to belch or cough. And I shared a an experience with him that he could try because he said to every time he was having something to eat, his stomach was upset. So I shared my little experience with him and he did um, what I said and then he asked for the rest of his food. So we and Mish start to laugh, 
because we were laughing to say that that what Mark, Mark just had was nothing to what he always have. So anyway, after he finished eating, he went to, um, to lay down on the floor. So I went down beside him and I pray with him. And, and, we, and we part then. He didn't look nothing as if this was the last time I would have seen him. But on Tuesday, that was Monday, and Tuesday evening, I called Mitch and said, what's going on, my girl? And she was again concerned that he was showing up and she didn't like what is happening. But she get whatever she had to get and went home. But in the end of the day, um, probably about 8.30 in the evening or tonight, to 9, I was restless. I did not feel good in my spirit. So I said, I text in the group, the, the church group, and said, we must at this time lift up, the, lift up to God the Emmings family, especially Mark, not knowing that at that same time, Mish was getting him ready for the hospital. I fell asleep, but the next morning, my daughter called me to say, Mom, did you hear that Mark died? I said, no. I started to call Mitch's number. I didn't get her, and I realized for certain this was true. The Sunday before that, though, I remember Sister Michelle came to church, and she was sitting there, and just a while ago, I just remember when I heard Mish cried out and all her stomach, and she made a groan. Um, we would not have thought that probably that was our first groan, but I know that God is preparing you for greater things. Whether it be Abram Lincoln, the 16th president of the USA, which put a poem into writing when he said, why should the spirit of mortal man be proud like a swift fleeting mentor or a passing cloud or a flash of lightning, a break of wave, it passes from life to rest in the grave. Abraham Lincoln decided to go public with his conviction on April 13, 1865 and shared that he would be baptized on the 18th of April, 1865, only to know 24 hours later, he was baptized into blood instead of water because the maddest pistol shot in history of the ages. His experience at the last minute gave the assurance that his work on hurt was done just like the man on the cross when he asked God, he asked Jesus to remember him in paradise. Mark came that morning here, although I did not get to come. Assistant Pastor Redwood answered the call that day. And he shared with us that Mark came here and he pierced the altar walked from back to, back to front and was talking to God. He was talking and he was talking and he was crying and he was praying. And one thing I remember, I heard Assistant Redwood said, he said, when he come, he wants to be active. He don't want to sit and do nothing. But all this is so good because I know he have answered the master's call. To Mish, well, first of all, to the mother, Mrs. Emmons, it's a painful departure. And if I am just a friend and feel it so hard, I can imagine, I can only imagine. But one thing I know, we serve a God that is a God of comfort. Even up on the cross, he said to his friends, there is your mother. 
So I know he's going to prepare somebody, someone to be in that space anytime you need it. To Mish and the children, I know it's going to be hard and harder because this journey without him, you know not. But like Agar, in the wilderness of her life, the angel point to him water, that the, ch the child could be watered, and she was sustained. To the sisters, Jesus reminded Mary and Martha after their brother's death that he is the resurrection and the life. And so you will see him again. Friends and family, I call death SSS. It is silent, it is sad, and it is sure. So take time to know each other. Take time to know God. And because of the shell, like glass is fragile, soon we will be broken also. So surrender yourself to the Prince of Peace and he in the potter's hand. While you're in the potter's hand, he will keep moaning us over and over again. Good afternoon, everyone. We are a very large family representing Tax Administration Jamaica. And we will have our group from the Port Antonio office sing. I will do a presentation on behalf of the Commissioner General, and then we will close out. So may I invite the choir to come? Good afternoon, everyone. While we prepare to sing, I just want to take this opportunity on behalf of the Tax Administration, Port Antonio, to encourage the family of Mr. Hemmings to be strong in this time. Hope is not yet lost. We still have hope once there is life. And so we want to sing this song for you as a means to encourage and to give you strength. Oh! 
Members of the clergy, family of Mr. Mark Anthony St. Aubin Hemmings, fellow co workers of Tax Administration Jamaica, friends and well wishers, greetings. My name is Venice Erskine Carr, General Manager for the Tax Administration St. Andrew, representing the Commissioner General and staff at this unexpected place. The Commissioner General and staff extends deepest condolences to Mark's family and friends, including his Tax Administration Jamaica work family, especially those at the Port Antonio Tax Office. It's so interesting that I took up this position in January of 2022, and I met Mark for the first time in March. I never thought that would be my only meeting, as I never got a chance to see him again. Mark worked with this organization for the past 32 years. He began his tenure with Tax Administration Jamaica in its former Inland Revenue Department as a departmental assistant on August 8, 1989, straight out of the Titchfield High School. During his employment, he proved himself to be an excellent team spirit builder, reliable, trainable, eager to learn, and a dependable individual who displayed the right attitude towards work within the compliance unit. Mark was described by his first supervisor in the authority as a person who exhibited the maturity that allowed him to be versed in the general knowledge of several positions in the authority. He learned quickly, understood the roles and functions of the unit, and he was willing and a very hard worker. He displayed excellent investigative and intelligence skills which were reflected in the quality of his work. So much so that he climbed the ladder of success by being departmental assistant, clerical officer in 1989, 92, and shortly thereafter, 
he became accounting clerk one. He became a compliance officer in 2001 and was in that position until his untimely death. Mark spent a great deal of time in improving the wealth of knowledge that he had gained through various internal trainings and the commencement of his bachelor's degree in management studies. He was described as a kind, always caring person, carrying peer for colleagues, the person who struck the balance in the unit, the funny guy who always greeted everyone with a good morning, no matter what time of day it was. Very playful. Anger was not something to be found in him as he always remained positive and added that positive energy in his environment. He always had a word or a conscious thought. For example, saying, don't let anybody determine your happiness. Your business is yours. Don't stress over anything. Mark was the kind of person to always be gifting somebody with something, even if it meant that he would take it from someone else to give them. One of his colleagues remembered when he gave her a birthday gift, well wrapped with pretty paper, and told her not to open it until she was home. You see, when we pull it, one pound of yellow yam. <laughs> Jovial <laughs> should really have been Mark's middle name. There was never a dull moment around him. If he's not calling his manager's secretary three of them, he would write his name all over as M for mischievous, A for active, R for romantic, and K for kind. And there were no lies about this acronym. He was always on the go, very active. But one thing that could not distract Mark was his food, especially mala chicken and fried rice. Then he would sit with his gleaner. Yes, everything else would have to wait. Another colleague remembered when they went for an interview and they were all waiting for a long time and anxiety was getting the best of them. Mark got up and said he was going to dance for them and he did dance. The interviewer came, even came out and saw him dancing and that laugh changed the whole mood of the room. One thing with Mark, he was always concerned about his supervisor and colleagues. If his supervisor's door was closed, he would wonder what was taking place inside. Sometimes, while walking through the park, he would call his supervisor and tell her to look at him through the window. He would sometimes tell his supervisor, Miss T, you know is when you're not here, I know you do a lot of work. I don't know how you do it, but you make it look easy. Mark was always writing little notes and placing them on one of his colleagues' car. He would always pretend like he knew, he knew nothing about it. However, one day he used a piece of paper that unknown to him had his name on it. He was always giving his colleagues the big brother talk. Mark liked to do well in his work, always seeking a way to improve. And the challenge that Mark back down from just simply did not exist. Above all, the greatest quality about Mark was his love for his family. His love for his children was unmatched. Though he was very jovial, he was also very strict with them. This was to ensure that they were being groomed the right way. T.A.J., particularly his Port Antonio tax office family, will continue to feel the ripple effects from his absence. He was a giant, a gentle giant, an impressionable giant, an irreplaceable giant. His passing has left a void so deep and wide that we don't know if it can ever be filled. We are poor for losing him, as he has left with not just the wealth of knowledge, but also the attitude that contributes to our core values, which is impact, integrity, mutual respect, professionalism, accountability, customer centricity, teamwork. We, his family, we go on, not because we want to, nor because we have the energy to, but because Mark has left 
a legacy for us to follow. He has taught us how to be selfless and how to seize and enjoy every moment. We will truly miss him. To Mark's family, the untimely departure of your father, son, brother, husband, beloved colleague, whatever he was to you, just left us speechless. We pray that God will comfort you. We leave you with some words of comfort from Chief Dan George, an American Indian, who, like Mark, was a small giant. May the stars carry your sadness away. May the flowers fill your hearts with beauty. May hope forever wipe away your tears. And above all, may silence make you strong. At this time, I'd like to present a token to his family. I know his wife is not a hundred today, but whomever you'd like to come and receive on behalf of your family, this plaque presented today to the family of Mark A. St. A. Hemmings for over 32 years of valuable contribution given to this authority, June 2022. May I hug you? And this token of flowers May I hug you. May the blooms never fade. And may you always remember that even though Mark is not here, we are here and we will remain family. Thank you. Love you. Um, I don't have a song or a poem, but today what I would like to do is a profession of love to my dad. Not in the form of a song or a poem or, or, or a letter. I don't even have a paper because I don't need to write down to explain how, lo how loving for he was. I often tell people that I never know if I take taxi until I'm like 10th grade or 11th grade or high school. Every single day from basic school, go straight up to 10th grade or high school. My father bring me to school, pick me up. Every single day without changing. Nothing not changed. Like, it was just... Uh, I tell you, it's it hard to explain. Um, who knew him for probably like four or five or eight hours a day can tell you how much they loved him. But so imagine his family that he lived with every day, all day, every weekend, every holiday, you know. I don't need a paper to tell you how much I love him. My father was an astounding person. May I tell you, I, I've never wanted for anything in my life. Furthermore, him always tell me, say, if my friend them parents buy them nothing, and me like it, and me want it, come and tell him. Don't take it. And him always tell me, say, if me borrow something two times, don't borrow it the third time. He may buy and give me. Me no want clothes. Me no, furthermore, he never want me left the yard, so he buy everything for my comfort for staying at the yard. Every single thing. Game, internet, everything. He was a loving father, but you, you wouldn't know the strict side of him. Extremely strict, may I tell you, strict. We could have got party on him or something there, them, them the way them. This kind of start free up when we start go high school and so on. He still never ever had like free until I left the house. I since my big me boy me years for sure you said me could have. Them something he never worked with that. So anytime he see me come when my boy me years the first day, I said to my wife, say, here I know. And he said, Come my daughter. 
Got to him, I'm going to bore you years and them something. Like so, may I tell you, trust me, him, you would really understand him until you, you're dead home with him all night and you lie down and you watch news and you know not talk and you know reason. And if you tell you the truth, he probably talk to you even more than you used to talk to we still because. I don't know him as a talkative person and people come and I say him, him, him I elaborate to them all day. I don't know him as a type of person. But um, <laughs> trust me, in showing love, he never, he never really like I don't know any type of father where would have hug you and them something still, you know. And he never have to do it because you know. In the ingestion, you know, him do things, you know. So he never have to hug you and he never have to tell you saying love if you know saying love. Um, it's hard to sum up so much memory in a such a short time. And I try to be strong at the same time. Um, I can remember every morning before I go to work, I used to run to the gate, the front grill, and push me up on the front grill. So, and he kissed me on my forehead every single morning. Um, I remember the day he said, This have got to stop now, because you are a big man. He <laughs> said, I can't kiss, kiss you, so. <laughs> Every morning, you know, I tell him, I look forward to my kiss from my forehead. Every single morning, I tell him. I look forward to it. And the man, one man, I can never forget. I'm young. I'm sure he said, He born me, me young. I'm probably about four or five years old. And I remember when he said, Keely, no, no more kiss. Yeah, I get big. And I say, and I say, all right. I say, all right, I don't say nothing. Um, I never, just always stay. We never really tell each other, so we love each other. Like, he just did weird, because he just, is it, him not a type of, him no emotional like that for you. You know, you tend to say you love him and him say what you want. Or that type of something. Like <laughs> so, but me, honestly, me feel good for no say, before he gets sick, one day I'm down at the farm and he come look for me. He say my surprise mother I don't chuck. Cause you know she do wedding and so. So in me tell him find one chuck, so he come look for me. And we're down there and many reason for the longest. We used to reason sometimes now. Although we don't talk for hour and two months, when we do back up, a long reasoning, one bag or something. So him, at that at that point me tell him said old man me call him. So I say, old man, you have to take a little better care of yourself and, and them things there, you know, and you have to eat better and I live at St. Mary. I live here, so I did look forward because we did a plan to say, we go, I did help me, we did put together and make one well, house for me up at the yard, so I did look extremely forward to that. It break my heart for you, say. When I police, or I still police, but remember, I used to get worried about, you know, I don't me, me no work here, I don't have much time. So, I don't have much time. Just give me a second. What he wants to say is that he remember is not important to on your often. So when he does come to look for dad and spend a night with us, when him leaving, Mark would say, you yeah, leave already? With a sad feeling and a sad sound, like him not ready for him to leave yet. So that is why it is breaking him that hard because he always feel like that he don't want me leave, you know. But he had to leave. So that is why it's breaking him that much. Yeah. Well, yeah, that well, basically my mother just summed me up still. So basically that, they used to say, you yeah, go so quick, or when you come back. I couldn't tell him, because I don't know when I come back, because I have things I do. And you know, really, I, I pray, say, I allow us a year. I really, 
a pre-sale last year still. But uh, back to me, I said, we, we did have a long talk when he could look me down on the farm. And I f that me can remember very first, I think the first time since me an adult, since, since me know myself, me about telling him to love him. He didn't say back still, but me know, he never have to say still. He didn't know. He didn't say back, but me didn't know. For very you know, old man, you have to take better care of yourself. And you need to start jog because your belly too big and it don't look good. I tell him. He said, left him with him belly. And he look good and me feel hacks in wife. <laughs> and I say, you have a body hungry that wife would love. Because nobody else want to see you look so. <laughs> so, I always tell him, say, you know, you need to be healthy and then I can think like that. Really and truly, you know, if I tell you the truth. I mean, I was saying, I see it coming, but it's a day I dread. And I talk to them about it all the time. And I say, I always say to them, say, if I tell you the truth, I must prefer to bury me than to bury you. That, that I type of love for me have for my parents. I never know, think I could have lived without either one. But apparently, I left me and forgot to know. Um, I tell you, for me, old man, who don't know him like, like how we know him. I said, the man come like clockwork. I work. When I work, I can. I'm a me, me police. I'm talk, talk about my father. I'm talk about my mother. I'm, I feel my people them there. You know, I was telling someone I'm rich. I tell them to buy two bikes and I love bike. So I say one for him and one for me. And I go buy him, I promise mommy want um, a hardy long time. Can't come yet, but I come another time. I don't know when. Um, me used to sit down at work and I used to say, you know, I can't tell my father I don't know. I'm going to talk to him. I can't tell him I don't know. I'm going to come so I'm going to look at my watch. And I said, uh, Saturday, 10 o'clock, that is our road. And I said, and he said, oh, you know that? And I said, I know him. He do the same thing every single day, all the time, routine. And I said, watch out now. I call my mother. I call him level, level 15. And I bet I said, he must say, just come off the road. And I call him level 15. And I said, where are you? And he said, you know, I just left down the road, down at Tony. And the man said, oh, you know that? And I said, watch out now. Give him, give, him, give him an hour. I'm going to eat breakfast by 12.30 if I cook. Or maybe he may cook. I'm going to eat breakfast by 12.30. 12.30 the latest now. Catch him. 12.30, one, he must asleep. He must asleep. And he now get up till 3.30. Yeah, I've heard him that. He get up 5 o'clock every morning and do the same thing. Pan a weekend. And when 12.30, 3 o'clock, go to sleep 12.30, I'm start call 1, 2 o'clock. I say, I'm going to get him. And I call him and I show him. Because they don't believe me. Up to, you know, they never believe me at the point. And I call and I call and I call and I don't get no answer. I say, all right, I call him about 4 o'clock. I call at 4 o'clock. He answer. And I say, where did they? Put the phone up on speaker. And I say, I'm asleep, man. And then the man, the man laugh at me and say, the man routine, me I tell you. So after the, this is the argument done with them. But I know when you have to 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, he go out the door. He not nothing to do in the yard, you know. But he just walk. And when he, he love going like him, I do hard work. So. He not doing no work out there, you know. But, yo, we had a look through all the window, and he run back and he splash up in face with water. And I come round in front. And, mommy, I said, oh, you wait, so? You see me, I work hard. <laughs> I tell her, say, the, 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 the house never dull without him. Anywhere we go, never dull without him. Anywhere we go at all, never dull. I said, the man, we see a complete stranger. And the, wherever we there, any half is anywhere, everybody there will laugh. May I tell you? I him that. Um, I have a whole lot more for say, I will keep on it too much longer. But um, trust me, he, he will be surely missed. The love where him give show me and my little sister them. May I tell you, sir, when I tell people about that type of love there. Them say, yo, you're lucky, because I never know my father. And I say, watch your man, just cool, man. I tell her, say, for me, old man, or normal, as a big man. Me, me is a man, you can't study me, you know. Today, me a police, tomorrow, me a soldier. And then, and then I go on a foreign, and then I come back. And I me that, he did understand me. He never like he still, you know. He never like say, me no, me no, me no stable. And I do a bag or something. He never like that. He never like say, me left for police work and go and do farming. And what makes me feel good, though, is 
when me go back, when when him did sick. Can you always say, well, I can't go back, I can't go back. And I said, I can't do that right now, daddy. We can't reach out to that. We can't take care of that. Oh, I want to take care of that. We can't buy you know, one buy out of police pay. Eh? I have to go borrow a loan and pay a loan for the rest of my life. I can't pay you buy nothing with that. So I buy a big farm and I run my farm and I plan everything with him like. In my market, you know, I plan with the people and want to buy out a road. You know. I plan with him like, like he can eat one year melon. So I always make sure I plan melon. Or I plan something where I can load up the van there and bring up a yard and eat. I tell the man, the man could have eaten. I tell the man, the man, you give man a two melon sat there and the man a call you Monday. And I said, Daddy, two melon done already. I'm not talking about some liquor melon. I'm talking about some 30 pound melon. You know, and the man glut down the melon in one weekend. You know. And the man said, When you come again? And I said, I said, I come weekend, man. He said, Weekend too far. I come fit a man in. And I said, Come fit. I tell her the man never normal, I tell her man. Trust me. He never normal. I me, me, me take pride in him as my father, I tell her. I would have never change him for. Me say, if a man come now and say, this man is a billionaire, pick him or your father, who you don't have to be a father. Me more my father, I don't want him. I don't want nothing from him. Because I tell her, say, the attributes and ethics of that man bring down to me. You know, normal, I tell her. Why did my wife come home and. Apparently, my mother and my father have the document them for when we go to school. I don't know why they harbor them so long, but they have them up there, apparently. And she going to the drawer and look and say, Me see your report. You're never late yet. Never late. Never absent. I say one day, them time they're not here hard about you. You don't remember 20 years ago, Rena fall. Put Rena fall about you again. And landslide broke up there. And I don't like school. So, when the landslide broke me, I said, yeah, back of me hard. I said, the man take none such and come run and bring me to school. I said, Jesus, this man serious. I said, I said, I said, I did it. And when I see landslide, I said, catch you now. Because every man in my farm said, come, I don't want to go to school. I don't like school. I can't bother. I want to stay in my yard and play the game and everything when you have the yard for me. So I don't want to leave my yard. And I said, Oh, man, miss, miss, that away. Where, where does the name again? Blue Wall. Blue Wall always have, have landslide. When I see landslide, I see the man say, I see him to know, I see him lick a reverse. Me. I say, yeah, man. Yeah, man, mission, mission successful. Yeah, man, back of my yard. I see the man take none such and reach round. And I never late for school. 8 o'clock, the man, man press gas. Right round, none such. 8 o'clock, the morning. Then time, if my friend, them, Catrell and them people who live up that side, if I'm bridging them, I'm going to school with them. They are in the yard. When I come home in the evening, the man they say, yo, your father really bring me to school, dog. And I say, yo, the man bring me to school, dog. I tell you. And I say, I tell you, man, hey, when I left school, my shirt can't out of my pants. I tell you that. My shirt can't out of my pants. Because I have a look, you know. And you spot the look from way down the so. And the man stand up with the revenue of his left foot from the wall. So every day, I tell you, who work a revenue and who they are put know him. He cock up his foot from the wall. So. When school over, uh -huh, like pit them a walk come down. And he may wait for me broke for me, can I? And so he may have my shirt out of my pants, but I put in it before I come out of for me. That are the type of old man, I tell you. Discipline. Discipline, discipline. I know my kind of probably broke up on the discipline, because, you know, they, oh, you know, over me again. You know, they over me, over me again, like, um, first time. But I tell you, he give me enough tough love. I may respect the tough love. I respect it to the core. I mean, I tell you, sir, that's why them youth and nowadays not really a, a perform so well, because they not get them a type of love that we get from my old man, them type of discipline there. I mean, I tell you, you know, as much as you hear me saying discipline, me never lick me yet. I mean, I say, you never come with me or give me something you have in your hand, but you never lick me with the belt or nothing. I can't remember or recall my father take out his belt and say, come for beating. Never. Never yet him ever do that to me. If I do something, at the moment, I will get two conk, and I eat that for the rest of the day. Or I get punishment in take with the game, and then look at him. But I wasn't that bad you growing up still, so I never really get much of that. Um, I can't go a little longer still, no? I just want to look a bit more. You know, try last time, and I was seeing him. So, I tell you, say, when I grow up, you know, I am not so ugly. I like, can't go on. And you know me, I'm a little girlfriend, the man, them thing that 
And that man never liked you. None of them, you know. <laughs> May I tell you, sir, you can't bring nobody to that man and he really feel that one, yeah. Until me meet my wife, you know, and, me, and she not too talk much now. So probably two years of them, he chat now for them. So he ain't killed with that. And him say, yeah, man, Keely. Keely didn't call me, I didn't call me king, any one of them. And he said, Keely, yeah, man, me, me like that one, yeah. Me like that one, yeah. And then I'm married. When I'm married now, he say, Congratulations, man. It's a rough, you know. I tell him, I go around, you know. It's a rough, but no give up. Like, man, literally tell me that, you know, it's just so shocking because I never expect him to say that, no, not at all. We married on his birthday, too. Um, he may go greatly miss, man, I tell him. Greatly miss, me. I tell him, I say, I could go back. Yesterday, I watched a slideshow, and I say, he may could go back to any one of them time there. Eh? Anyone. And start over. I could literally just start over. I tell us, just to have the time with him again. Enough time, sometimes our parents do things and growing up as a teenager, you're rebellious. You argue and them little thing there. And my mother always at it, you know. Because she loves us and me love us. I mean, how is a cut? Every day, say, me a mama, man, you know. So, my father come to me one day and he said, he said, King, and he really has a reason with me. And he said, Oh, what make you so angry? What make, you can't argue with them, mother. You can't say nothing. You just never hear me. Up to now, I can't say nothing. I just always have to say something. I don't know. I just can't do it. He come like, I don't know. I just can't do it. And I never try to change. But he counsel me. He talk to me. He keep me on the right part all along. I don't smoke. Them the time, I never did that. I don't smoke now still. But I never did used to smoke weed. I don't corner. I don't drink. Because, not that I couldn't, I could have hide and do it, but the respect I have for him, I don't want nobody to tell me. Daddy said, you know, I see a youth us up, up, up with some youth uh, a smoke. I mean, I just never want that because to me, the respect when I have for him, when I have for him, is greater than um, that. I don't beat me and run from I the game. I just the mere fact, oh, I'm going to look for me when he hears say, I do certain things. That's why when me a police, me not go around, me not, me not take people money, me not do nothing. Because I'm, I'm well known, you know. Me I tell us when me there, a foreign, a fame name me used to get work, you know. You would have never believed how people know this man, me I tell you, you know. Florida, New York, anywhere you're there. If you buck up on a Jamaican man, it's either him and him used to play football at town or wherever, and they respect him. Once me show them picture and say, yeah, man, no bad football this from Portland, man. Yeah, man, and, and I saw all I heard them when I get a foreign. I feel near me and for use. Because they don't know me. They don't know me from nowhere. Me have to say a scooper. Me a scooper, youth man. Be that, me tell them. Me a scooper, youth man. You know, scooper. And then I saw we get through with bully or something. Um, basically, this piece was my professional love. For not really get an understanding of the character, the type of person that he was. You know, I'm not going to lie for days. Weeks, I never know what to do myself. Because he talked to me before he would drop out. Before he was sick. And he tell me, say, if he drop out, I do this and I do that. At the type of man that he planned, he said, go on, go do this, go on, go do that. And you have to do that for mommy and my sister then. And I said, I'm going to do that, man. go man. You know that. You know that. Anything what you do, anywhere you drop off, me will pick up. And I tell him that. And as I said, I'm going to finish with this will give me some sense of closure to the whole matter. No, I'm not finish it. I'm not going to tell you now. I'm not going to tell you now. I'm going to finish with this now. Is that um, when I did, me, as I said, I'm an orthodox. I resign and I'm going to work and I'm all over the place. And when I did resign, I'm going to do farming a couple of years well. I'm going to have a restaurant and I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to do my little bustling. I'm going to try and make it. And when they come, when he's sick, they say, I said, you would have come back to work at a, at a police work. I kissed my teeth and I said, no, I'm not deaf on that now because I said, my old man sick and you know not come to me down. I tell her that. My old man sick and I have to do you every day. And you know not stop me from going to you. Not if you queen of England could stop and put you on the road and stop me from bringing my father to you every day. And they said, all right, go away sometime then. No? I said, all right, give me about two weeks. Because after two weeks, I'm going to go home. And give me the two weeks. And 
I still wonder if I go because I'm going to tie me up, man. I'm not going to go look for him every day and them things that I get like I'm going to do. I'm going to tie me up bad. I can't manage to drive from Boston and go way away every day and I can't. Right? So he said, you stick me up now. So he said, if you don't go up Monday, don't call back my phone. And I said, all right, daddy. He's sick and I did vulnerable at the time. And he said, don't call back my phone if you don't go work Monday. I'm going to go work Monday and call him and he talked to me good. And he said, yeah, man. That more, yeah, man. Stay in a little bit. You have to stay favor, you know. Stay in a good talk, man. I'm up on the phone. And it's sad for no, so I'm on the work. And daddy, they two days after that. He gave me a little clue, a bittersweet, because I do what he did want at the end. And I feel like when he might go, he knows, say, you know, for me, no stay away for him, come make my crap white out. So he knows, say, I have a salary and everything that come in. So I feel like. Him, him, him free up himself, this or no. Honestly, I feel like him just did really want to go still, no matter the truth. I feel like him free up himself because he insists I'm going back to work now two days after me. Say. Two days after me, I thought him good. And he said, Good, I'm glad that that man did really want two days after that thing gone. So, I have my two cents. And um, thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing memories and such. So, yes. Is Mr. Colmaine Smith here? Mr. Smith, are you anywhere? Ladies and gentlemen, please don't feel that way. My voice kind of little one way because I was, you know, you know. Anyway, my name is Colmain Smith. Everybody know me as Paul. Who uh -huh. know me? Anyway, I heard everybody talking last night at the thing and probably I wonder why I'll never say nothing. And I said, oh, I so scoop a brother and he didn't say nothing last night. But me know say Michelle it set me up and they want me to talk today. So me I'm gonna three scenarios because me not gonna stay too long because I'm kinda emotional right now. Anyway I was going to teach for you with Mark and me and Mark and Andy Canical. Everybody know we cherry part together. So Andy used to play football. Scooper used to play football. I'll not play nothing you know, but everybody know me. So three scenarios me are going in and left, you know. So Scooper come to because me know everybody. So Scooper come to me one day and says, Super. No, he called me Coleman. He said, he see one girl. And he liked the girl. So he wanted me to find out. He, wa he wanted to know if I know that girl. So I said, you know, so I know every girl. So he, he said, she named Michelle. So I said, where she live? Scoop, I said, she lives on her west. In front of Banner, back of you, you yard. So I said, that Michelle there. But me, me like her sister. So guess what? Beauty with it. So, with Michelle, 
Go sit down. So that was like almost 40 years ago. You understand? And see Michelle there. Eh? Michelle, how much pin you have? Four? Three? How much of them may have Godfather for? One? That not good. So, Mr. Iret right, Scooper, me, I'm going to make sure I say you and that girl like that. I look there, scoop, I married her. I have three kids, you see? Uh, up until this day, we're not together, don't. So you don't forget me a kiss for that. Come here. <laughs> Michelle, come here, man. I want that. No, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, congregation, I cannot tell you all the scenarios. That even Michelle Rebex with me. Me can't talk certain things. But I get one next one now. I was living in Red Hazel and Scooper live at West. So me, my girlfriend live at West too. So then time that we not have no bicycle or nothing like that. So me have to walk from Uptown, go to Bumbrook, and then when we don't talk to Maxine, where the whole I want to know some I'm my girlfriend, ex, may have to come back, past Bumbrook, past Cooper Yard, and walk go way up a radius and every single night. So here's Cooper now, Al, I don't know where you're going to Maxine at night time, but when you pass back Bumbrook, come run to my yard and make sure you get something to eat. Because me don't know where you go with dog about bro. But every time every time you pass uh, Janga Gully, that's your name? Yeah, when you pass Janga Gully, come round this one. So I guess I scoop I don't know. Scoop I met my watch to the gate. Mr. Means in here. Scoop I met me wish there. Hi, Mr. Means. Scoop and make me walk to the side gate and go run at the back and knock on the window and him push the food through the window. <laughs> and give me Scoop and we get in dinner and he left half right for me. If it, cause Scoop I love food, you know. So if he eat half the food, he will give me a piece of bread and butter or cheese or one little piece of the chicken he left half of food. I give me a camera and say, Al, I don't know where you got a bum break or do, but I know so when I come back, you got hungry. <laughs> so guess what now? Because I, I, that was the second scenario. I can't go to 100 now, but I just go to three. So hold well, on now. That's a two, right? All right, the third one now. Me and Andy can in the day here today because his wedding is today. He my married on a man today. So that's why I couldn't be here. So I have to represent for the two away. Because I'm me, Andy Canical, and Mark Paratichfield. We have some next friend in you know, like Julian, little older than we, Taylor them, Brooks, Chana, but then got seen at school. But me and Andy and Mark Paratichfield. So me and Andy come together one day you know, and say, Boy, Michelle, you don't know this, you know. But you know now. So guess what? I said, Mark, I always I give you food. So what we can do for make Mark eat some food without him putting nothing? And they said, then time the VCR just come in and call a TV. So and the father buy one VCR and one TV. So what we do now? We say, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put on one video show in the art room. So we can make some money. So when we don't make the money now, we can go down and more go buy food for Mark. And Mark never knows so how we are doing it, you know. So the, the Friday come now, and we are put on the, the, the movie them. I was a so Cooper, we are put on some movie in our room, you know. So Cooper said, me, you put on movie in our room. I ain't know about it. We say, are you, we want, we want the money for. Catch you, you always are giving food. We are make sure, say, we can make some money, because when, People think everybody rich, you know, because we did go on like we're rich, but we don't have no money. 
We never have no money. A woman used to buy with lunch. Ask Julian. Julian, see Julian there? Eh? A woman used to buy with food. Michelle, you know what? Oh, we never have no money. So we we'll put on the show. Then turn the VCR just coming, Julian. And we we'll put on the show. When the show don't know enough, the first Friday. How much money we make? Then turn the yellow have a red twenty dollar them. I don't know how much hundred and twenty dollar. We could have more. You know, more did they wish for a family building there now? And when we go in and more, right at theater, sir. And when we had a food and had a food and had a food, and the money done. Yes, Cooper. Then we don't say, we don't get money. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, scoop I say, when I say, you don't go get money if you buy food for me. So all the food, all the money done, I've been not getting enough food. <laughs> <laughs> I will buy like six food, six box food. Six. Me eat one, so you know much left. Five left. Right? And they eat one. How much left? Scoop a heat four. How <laughs> oh, when the man eat the four, you know? The man say, oh, no, so I'm not going to make money for me. I me not get enough food. I saw the man stay. Ladies and gentlemen, it was nice to see you guys. That was three scenarios I said I was going to give you. I could stay here all day and talk about Mark. I'm a brother. I love him. Miss him. And thank you very much. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise his name. Amen. We want to thank everyone for these lovely tributes and uh, I think the last two was taking you down memory lane amen and I must commend the tax administrative choir of Port Antonio I want to say you sounded so good Amen. And thank you for that messaging song reminding us that the God of the good times is the same God in the bad times. And you know what? He promised that he will never leave us, but he will be with us always, even unto the end of the age. Amen. But there is also another message coming out of Mrs. Goodall's tribute. She told you that Mark came to this altar maybe the day after he came from the hospital. He knelt at this altar and he settled the account with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't that something to rejoice about? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He communicated with his God. Praise the name of the Lord. He prayed to his God. He asked forgiveness. Praise the name of the Lord. And so today we rejoice because he has gone home to be with his Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. At this time, we will have the offertory hymn. I'm going to ask the ushers just to wait on you for the offering. And you can start from the outside. Well, somebody should be on the outside and maybe another three or so on the inside. You can sit while we do the hymn. The Lord's my shepherd to the tune of the happy wanderer. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastors green, he leadeth me the quiet waters by. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your love and your care. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. And Father God, as your people have stretched, Lord, to give a portion of what you have blessed them with. Father God, I pray that you will bless them in the name of Jesus. 
and bless this offering that it will use to the extension of your work here on earth. These mercies we ask in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In preparing this program, I, I struggled with a thought. And now I reach where I am going to make the decision. Amen. So please just bear with me. I'm going to change something around. Amen. I wanted to do it in preparing, but I just didn't. And I have to do it now. So I am going to be taking the eulogy right where the sermon is supposed to come. So at this time, the choir will minister. And the next voice you will hear is that of Reverend Phillips. I must say, though, that the Reverend Grant came in a little late. Welcome, sir, and we are happy to have you.
I'm happy every day as I travel through this land. I've been mightily blessed by God and I'm holding to his hand. My journey's almost over, the battle nearly won. I have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come. But I walk to heaven's gate. The first time I see Jesus, I go on you way. He showed me to my heart, shot to build this is your home. As I travel through this I've been mightily blessed by God And I'm holding to His hand My journey's almost over And the battle's soon be won I have a feeling in my heart The best is yet to come The best is yet to come When I walk to heaven's place the first time I see Jesus, I go on the way. He took me to my land, shall say, China is your home. I have a feeling in my heart, the best is the good Oh, standing down on Jordan, bankers and this are chilling. The storms of life are raging, but I'm happy down inside. I see the light for coming, so beautiful to me home. I have a feeling in my heart, the best is yet to come. The best is when I walk to heaven's gate. The first time I see Jesus, I can see the best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come. When I walk to heaven's gate, the first time I see Jesus, I could have been here. They put me to my heart, Sean and Bergen is your home. I have a feeling in my heart of the best is come on, Sean. Oh, the best is yet to come when I walk to heaven's gate. The first time I see Jesus, I could have been here. To my mansion, I'm burning in your home. I have a feeling in my heart of the best. Hallelujah! Oh, the best is yet to come when I walk to heaven's gate. The first time I see Jesus, I go hardly with it. Oh, I have a feeling in my heart The best 
Acknowledge the presence of our administrative bishop and pastor of this church and our circuit overseer, Bishop Pearl Jones, to the other ministers on the forum, to Reverend Dane Grant, who is the chairman of the East Portland Ministers Fraternal and the pastor of the Paul Antonio Baptist Circuit of Churches, to Reverend Robinson, to all the other ministers, Missionary Cohen and Missionary Brown Evangelist and all the other persons here. I want to extend condolences to the Hemings family. I am not a very good consoler when it comes on to death. And because of such, I don't even attempt to do grief counseling. Because in these trying times, I don't know what to tell a wife, a son, a daughter, and not to mention a mother for them to feel better. But I know that God is still in control and that he is still God. To all the other ministers down there, see Pastor Giddings, Reverend Richards and others, greetings. So, cheer up the Hemings, cheer up. To my very good friend, Sister Catherine. I want to say, yes, Catherine is my lifelong friend. I don't know if the friendship has expired, but if it has expired, she has to renew it. All right, my very good friend, Sister Vera, and to my stepdaughter, Michelle, that God, you ask her how that goes after the funeral. But God will take care of you and to the kids. Time, my time is gone, but I want to share with you a particular text from the book, The Minor Prophet Habakkuk. I'm not a very good expositor of the Old Testament, more so the prophetic books. But the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, and verse 17 and 18, jumped at me as I pondered what I would say to us this afternoon. Reading from the NIV, it says, Though the fig tree does not blossom, and there is no grapes on the vines, though the olive fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation because the sovereign Lord is my strength. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And the church say, Amen. The book of Habakkuk was written by the prophet himself before the conquest of Jerusalem by the Babylonian in 587 BC. Abacom the prophet, like you and I, asked God why the good people have to endure bad things. Or in other words, why bad things happen to good people and why the bad people seem to be doing well. Habakkuk looked ahead to the forthcoming invasion of the Babylonian. Time will not allow me to give you the background to this text. But the prophet Habakkuk, he had a problem and he expressed such problem with God. 
Habakkuk was one of God's prophets. But in chapter 1, he brought a complaint to God. He said, God, when I look around, I see a lot of sin and injustice. And I really feel like you need to be doing something, God. I just seem not to be doing anything. But it seems as if life is not fair. God responds to Habakkuk was, don't worry. I do care. And I'm going to take care of everything. Before long, if you read the background to that text, you'll see where the Babylonian came and they destroyed Judah because of what Judah has done. But it seems as if that God was distant in the tough times in the life of Habakkuk. And Habakkuk really looked at life and he really told God that life is not fair. Like some of us this afternoon, we look and look at Mark, a very quiet. He was of a quiet disposition, reserved, not troubling nobody, not do nothing that is wrong. But yet he is the one who has gone on to be with God while the wicked are around prospering. So Habakkuk says life is not fair. And I think pretty much that all of us, one time or another, will have drawn the conclusion that life is not fair. Like Habakkuk, there have been times in our life when we have prayed, when we continue to look forward for God to come through for us. And it seems like God doesn't seem to care about anything that I am going through. As a matter of fact, Habakkuk came to the conclusion that where is God when I need him the most? When life is surrounded by injustice immorality, violence, as we can see, even in our country, it is only natural that God does something about it. We see in chapter 2, and I have to just skim and scan through the text, skim and scan through the text, in chapter 2, where God assured him that there will be an impending judgment. We have a lot of phrases for this. In other words, God said, Habakkuk, one day the chicken will come home to roost. Or what goes around, comes around. If you dance, you've got to pay the piper. You reap what you sow, or wherever you want to put it. But God said to Habakkuk, sooner or later, we will have to face the consequences of these choices. You cannot mock God forever. And ignore him and expect to go free. And that was the message in chapter 2. That God told Habakkuk clearly that there is an impending judgment. And once Habakkuk heard that message and he understood it. The whole tone of the book changes in chapter 2. The beginning of this book and the ending are very different. Because in chapter 1, Habakkuk is saying God, I don't understand. In chapter 2, God said, be patient and wait. And so Habakkuk did wait. And even though things around him did not seem to be changing or seem to be getting better, Habakkuk was at peace in chapter 3. And I want you to notice, because this is important, that nothing changed on the outside, but Habakkuk changed on the inside. In chapter 1, Habakkuk was upset and confused. But in chapter 3, Habakkuk was at peace. The beginning of this book was filled with mystery. God, I don't Plenty. The beginning is filled with questions. But the end 
with affirmations. The beginning is filled with complaint, but the end is with confidence. So how did Abacot get from one place of confusion and worry and fear to a place of faith, confidence and joy? How was he able to make that transition when nothing around him was changing? The people were still mocking God. Violence and crime was still on the streets. But outwardly, everything was still as messed up as it was in the beginning. But something changed in Abacock. How did this happen? When Abacock looked on the goodness of God, Abacock realized that God is good. In spite of what is happening around us, He is good. When you reach that point where you want to complain and murmur, and question God look on the goodness of God look what God has done for us in spite of what was taking place around him Abacock looked on the goodness of God in the past he looked and accept what God was doing now but in the last point, Abacock trusted God for what he was about to do. He trusted, in other words, Abacock trusted God in the past. He trusted God in the present. And he will continue to trust God in the future. Habakkuk, my brothers and sisters, he said, I will wait patiently for the Lord because he is still God. Habakkuk, like Job, my brothers and sisters, Job reached a place where it seems as if everything around him was confusion. But Job, as Abigail read, Job said, in all of my appointed time, I am going to wait until my change comes because a change is coming. This is not the end. Michelle, you may not understand what is happening now, but God promises that you will understand it in the sweet by and by. So my brothers and sisters, Abacock came to the conclusion in chapter 3 and Abacock says, though the fig tree is not blossoming. In other words, all those things are not going right with me. I am still going to trust him. I am still going to hold to his unchanging hands. I am going to believe him in the tough times and in the good times for the God of the mountain. He is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he will still make them right. In other words, as Abacock was simply saying, Mark is dead, but I am still alive. Mark is dead, but I am still in control. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. Abacock says, I am going to rejoice in the Lord. One of the churches with me, you're going to rejoice in tough times. You're going to rejoice in him. And he closed by saying, for the Lord is my strength. Strength like no other. God will remain my strength. And because God is my strength, I am going to rejoice. Even in the midst of calamity, I am going to rejoice. Even in the midst of pain, I am going to rejoice. Even in the midst of death, no food, I will still rejoice. The fig tree doesn't bud. Sometimes there are no grapes on the vine. Sometimes the olive crop fails. Sometimes the field produces no fruit. No sheep in the pen. Sometimes there are no cattle in the stall. What do you do then? Rejoice. I wonder if somebody is with me. It is faith that keeps us together. Faith keeps us together. Abba Cook said, I will wait patiently. 
But while I wait for God to come through for me, I am going to rejoice. I wonder if somebody is with me. I am going to rejoice. And you may not understand the things that are happening around you. But I came across an article by a pastor. He said, I've been serving Jesus for over 60 years. I have walked with God for enough yesterdays that I can trust him with all my tomorrows. And I pray, my brothers and sisters, like Abacock, Michelle and family, that you will find strength in the Lord. God is your strength. He is your strength. So Abacock point is this. If your trust is in God, he will give you stability in those slippery moments of your life. He will give you the ability to stand up when everybody around you is falling. But the only way we have this assurance is to trust God. Tell somebody beside you, trust God. Trust God, trust God. God and if there's ever a time that we need to trust God it is now trust God things may not be working out according to our plans but according to his plan the best is yet Lord have mercy I said the best is yet to come and one thing i've learned in this life that things have to get worse before they become better but at the end of the day things will get better for weeping will only endure for a night but my joy is coming in the morning am i talking to somebody up in here if you can't trust god in the bad times you're going to be having a problem just in God in good times. You can't determine a Christian when he's on the mountain top. You can only determine him when he's down in the valley. You gotta be like Job. Though he slay me, yet I'm gonna trust him. Comes what may, I'm gonna hold on to his unchanging hands because things will get better. And before I go, let me backslide a little bit. And let me draw the plate and tell you, Michelle, baby, don't worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right. The best is yet to come. hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord we praise god this evening for his precious words abacock was saying even through starvation and loss i am going to still praise god blessed be the name of the lord you see, his feelings was not controlled about the events around him, but his faith in God to give him strength. And so, the choir says, the God in the good times is the God in the bad times. He is going to sustain you and give you strength in these trying times. Miss Emmings, will you come at this time? Praise him. Good 
Good afternoon, everyone. I am Mark's sister, Janice, and I want to thank you so much for being here as we honor Mark and celebrate the life that he lived. There are many tributes given here today. There were no lies told. Last night, we had the remembrance and tribute night for him, and it was truly beautiful. It was great to hear all the special things that were said about my brother. He was an awesome person. 51 years ago, on September 26, 1970, Rupert and Vera brought Mark into this world. He was their first child, their only son. I was next, and then our sister, Catherine. Mark attended the Port Antonio Preparatory School, and you know, I hear you, and you know that our parents were very strict. So fortunately for him, he did not waste their money when he sat the common entrance exam. He passed his exams and he went on to Titchfield High School and there he would have met many of you. While at Titchfield, he started playing football and he earned the nickname Scooper because of the way in which he would use his feet to scoop the ball. I know he was also called Reuben, but to be honest, I'm not really clear why, but he was also called Reuben. He did very well at football and even, he was even called to play with the Black Stars football team back in the day. However, he declined because St. Anne was just too far from home. The playing field at Bonebrook, the pavilion, was where he played quite a lot. My sister told me a story about her going to a match and Scooper kicked a powerful shot that flew right over her head. As she was telling the story, it was clear that she was still traumatized. Surprisingly, he recently stated that he really did not like football. He just happened to be very good at it. You could hear the excitement, too, from the crowds whenever he ran onto the field during a match or whenever he had possession of the ball. Mark believed he was the best footballer the pavilion had ever seen. It was while he was attending Titchfield and was supposed to be paying attention to his schoolwork that he met his soulmate, Michelle. It was undoubtedly an exciting time for him, and I saw many changes in my brother thereafter. There were the long, quiet, or whispered telephone calls, and the guy who never cared if he wore stripes and <laughs> dots, polka dots, started to pay a little bit more attention to how he dressed. Mark's son, Shaquille, was born in 1995. And following Shaquille's birth, it was clear that Mark was on top of the world. Mark and Michelle got married in 1999, and thereafter, they welcomed two beautiful daughters, Abigail and Michaela. When Mark left Titchfield, he started working at the Inland Revenue Department, and up to the time of his passing, that's where he worked not because he had to, but because he wanted to. Mark loved simplicity and comfort. He was easygoing. He liked his workplace and he certainly enjoyed the flexibility it afforded him. I'm sure Michelle can tell you that Mark would often call her in the afternoons and say, Mish, Miss Taylor, just pick up our bag, so may I come home. Many persons here would also know that Mark would walk to almost every place he had to go, and his job allowed him that flexibility. If he had to go from the town to Boundbrook several times for a day, he would walk. 
his job allowed him to get to know and to help many persons. And it was perhaps his easygoing, down-to-earth nature that explains why so many persons were drawn to him. Walking through the town with Mark required great patience. He would be stopped several times by persons. He would be greeted numerous times, and he would greet persons numerous times as well. He would tell his daughter, Abby, your father a celebrity, you know. <laughs> this dude has royalty on board stenciled onto his vehicle. Yet he was humble. He did not like excitement, and he did not like persons making a fuss about him. He just loved giving jokes and helping people. Uh -oh. So many persons have said that he helped them with their taxes, that he would visit and spend time with them. Mark could find the humor in everything even in serious situations. I remember when he was in the hospital in Kingston and his sister Catherine, our sister Catherine, <laughs> called him via WhatsApp video call. Mark said to her, the doctors have told me that I am seriously ill so I don't think it's safe for me to be seeing you right now. <laughs> he could laugh at you until you started laughing too. If you knew my brother, and you have heard his son say it, he was also quite feisty, my sister says, indeed feisty. He had a temper and he could be very strong-willed, but he was not mean and he was not confrontational. He was very serious about his food. When we were young, Mark would steal meat from the freezer, tin food, rice, flour, whatever, and take it across the road to Brooks's house. And right there by the roadside, they would cook some of the best meals ever. I would often be called upon to pass the window to me. I enjoyed every moment of it. But perhaps that was the height of excitement for Mark. He was not a party animal. Simple things gave him pleasure. He loved his home in Fairy Hill and he loved his family. And as I mentioned before, he could barely stay at work in the days. He just simply wanted to be at his house doing something. And now we know from Shaquille, nothing <laughs> around the yard. <laughs> Raising his animals, cooking on his very tiny grill, playing his games or watching his favorite shows. He had no difficulty, just as Shaquille said, leaving home or work to pick up or drop off his wife or children. He would often speak with pride. Abby, who he thought was a little strange, and then he'd look at me and go, like you. And his little terrorist, <laughs> Mickey. Unfortunately, he live with high blood pressure. Over the years, the uncontrolled hypertension was taking its toll. Aortic dissection as for our families. I was at the hospital almost every day, as was his wife, Michelle, and his son, Shaquille. Day in, day out, we waited for the emergency surgery to take place, while inside of him, things worsened by the hour. There were always excuses for the delay. There was no bed on the water. There was insufficient blood. There was no blood platelets. There were no beds available in the ICU. One team was ready, while another team was not. They were short-staffed. Always an excuse. On April 17, 
while I was with him in the ICU, Mark made the joke that surgery would have to take place soon because they would run out of excuses. While we joked about that, a few minutes later, they actually came to get him and he was wheeled to the operating theater. The surgery lasted for almost 13 hours. They used a synthetic graft to repair the torn aorta. And then because of its weakened state, they had to remove a section leading to the abdomen and replace it with a mechanical valve. He made it through the surgery and in true Mark style, on day two, he tried to be funny. There he was, lying on the bed, barely able to talk, and with tubes and wires all over his body. I looked at him, and I had to admit that on day two, he looked much better than he did on day one. So I said to him, you look good, Mark. He said, yeah, girl. All I need now are some muscles, and I'll be too hot for these nurses. <laughs> oh, God. His recovery seemed to be progressing quickly, and it seemed too good to be true. He was out of ICU within three days and placed on Ward 6. He was discharged on Thursday, April 28th. And on Friday morning, April 29, he came to this church. He wanted to spend time with God. There was a side to Mark that may not have been evident to many persons. For someone who loved to make others happy, he internalized a lot. He worried a lot. And he sometimes became stressed about the smallest things. Mark was extremely anxious to leave the hospital. And when he came home, he got impatient about his progress. The mark that you heard others describe today is the mark that he wanted to be the minute he came out of the hospital. He was unable to accept that full recovery would take time, that he would have many limitations, that he would not be able to be to you and even to himself the man he used to be. We did not know the extent of these negative thoughts, but we knew that he seemed to be heading towards depression. Eating became difficult for him so on the evening of May 25, Michelle decided to take him to the hospital so that he could get medical care and IV fluids. He got dressed and walked out of his house towards his vehicle. Unfortunately, he collapsed right at the vehicle. The medical report states that Mark suffered a heart attack. But spending time with him during the last few days, we also feel that he died from a broken heart. I am so happy I was able to spend those last days with my brother. I just did not realize that those would indeed be his last days. His death still seems surreal. It is a shock because he was still young. We will miss his smile, his laughter, his jokes. We will miss his kindness and the way he always tried to help, the way he always tried to encourage persons and to ensure that persons were not sad. Recently, and even today, I heard him being described as a gentle giant. I completely agree with that. He was larger than life, but he did have a gentle touch. 
I am sad also because in the hospital, he spoke of plans to help others and to help his family. Plans he will never be able to fulfill. However, we celebrate the life that he lived because he gave so much of himself to so many of us. I could go on and on, but Mark also would tell me, no bother with it, keep it short. So I'm gonna keep it short. And in parting, I will also say what he used to say. Let's blow this popsicle joint. Rest in peace. Thank you so much, Miss Emmons, for that eulogy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. All is well that is done by the Lord. But to me, the most important thing is that he made it right with his maker. Praise the name of the Lord. And we are happy about that. We are coming down nicely. And uh, I am going to ask the congregation to stand. You have been sitting for a while. I'm going to ask the family members to remain seated. Praise the name of the Lord. And we are going to stand. And we are going to be praying for the bereaved family at this time. Reverend. Dane Grant will do us the honor of praying for. So it's prayer time, and we need your undivided attention. Please do not walk out at this time. It is prayer time. Be not dismayed, whatever it God will take care of you. In it is wings of love. God will take care of you. in spirit it is to you that we come in this moment for consolation courage and comfort draw near therefore O God to your children who are facing sadness and loss draw near to Mark's family hold each one ever closer in your precious arms of love and support. Compassionate Lord, remember his wife, Michelle, his children, Shaquille, Abigail, and Michaela, his mother, Vera, his siblings, Catherine, Janice. Allow your holy presence to embrace them kindly and tenderly so that their grief may be released and their hearts begin to find healing, meaning, and peace. Remember too, O oh God, Mark's extended family, his co-workers, friends, and associates who also are in need of your grace. Loving Father, when they find it hard to even get up out of bed to start the days ahead of them, 
knowing that they will have to face it alone and without the one whom they love so dearly. God, give them your grace. Give them your courage and sufficiency to get through especially these early days. Reassure them in these difficult moments that you are there to carry them, even when their hearts seem to fail from the grief and pain they bear. Teach each how to be a support to the other. Walk alongside each as they grieve separately. Counsel each as they grapple with their own mortality and fear. In this service of remembrance and thanksgiving, O oh God, give to all of us a heart that is sensitive to those who are grieving. Give to us the wisdom to know when to speak words of comfort or when to keep silent. We pray, O oh God, that you would use our lives to be channels of encouragement and hope through whom the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ will flow to offer healing and help to Mark's family and friends. Merciful Lord, help us through Mark Hemings' death to see more deeply into the meaning of life and to grasp more firmly the hope that life is indeed longer than our years and that the love that you show in Jesus Christ is stronger than death itself. This is our prayer, O God, on this day as we offer it in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Praying for the family today. Praise the name of the Lord. Brethren, I'm asking you kindly, please to remain seated. You have been a good audience up to now, so please continue. Yes, thank you for clearing the aisles. Please do so quickly. Amen. Before we do the recessional hymn, I'd like to tell you the order in which we are going to leave here. The minister will go in front, the choir behind, the casket behind, and the immediate family behind the caskets. To the cemetery, the minister will go in front, the earth behind, and the family right behind the hearse. And remember, we'll take the first entrance to the cemetery. The family is also asking that you join them for the repass at the pavilion in Bonebrook. That is after the, the committal. Amen? Bless the name of the Lord. Please stand. We do the hymn, I've reached the land of corn and wine, that all its riches freely mine. Air shines on dimmed one blissful day, for all my night has passed away. Please stand. I've reached the land of corn and wine, and all its riches freely mine. Air shines on him one blissful day for all my night has passed away.
Sweet hey. 